start recording. Okay. Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to River City Ransom Underground Underground. My name is Andrew Russell, and I am the lead programmer on River City Ransom Underground. Now, uh, this series is a little show I want to do where I talk about uh, technical features in the River City Ransom Underground engine. And last episode, I talked a lot about why I'm doing the show and uh, why the format is the way it is, and the fact that it's inspired by uh, Casey Muratori's Handmade Hero in many ways. Um, I'll just bring it up again. So handmadehero.org is worth checking out. Um, one thing that I didn't mention in the last episode, so there's one extra thing that I took some inspiration from um, Casey for. You know, the reason that I'm doing the series now is basically because Casey said, you know, that he would, he suggested it was a good idea and that he'd like to see some more uh, technical features of the engine. I was like, well, you know, I've been meaning to do this, so I'll get around to it. Anyway, so that happened a couple of weeks ago and um, Handmade Hero went on break for two weeks because Casey broke his microphone. I sat down to record this at about the same time and found that my microphone was broken. So I've had to wait two weeks to get a new microphone. So there you go, just taking inspiration from everywhere. Um, so this particular episode, I promise uh, that I would talk about something in uh, River City Ransom Underground that is directly inspired by um, yeah, by <clears throat> stuff that uh, Casey showed off early in Handmade Hero. And what that is, is uh, Casey calls it uh, looped live code editing. So I've got my IDE up somewhere. That's my email. Um, and then I have the game. So um, the way this works is, so I've got, I've got the game and I can, you know, I can run around and it's all good. I'll bring up the game view. So, so yeah, I've got two players in here. And what I can do is if I press a button uh, on the keyboard, I can start recording and I can do some actions and walk around um, over here and then I can hit play and it will replay that uh, particular piece of gameplay uh, from the start all the way around and then it'll just keep looping over and over again. Um, and that's the looping part and that's, that's sort of the important bit of this. And so let me, let me pause the game here and come over to the drawing thing. Um, drawing, drawing, drawing. Here we go. So the way this works is, say, good, we're working. So say we have, we'll call this the game state. And we have inputs coming into the game state. Um, we have an update that comes in with uh, input. So that's, you know, that's our game pad. This is gonna, you know, this amazing Xbox controller sort of thing with buttons and, you know, we have an input and each input comes on a frame. Um, so, which uh, means that it runs an update um, thing. And we also have uh, a few network events like uh, player joins and stuff. And they come into the state and, um, you know, uh, the state can run its update here and you know, run some logic when the player joins and players leave. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll spit out uh, display and audio. Uh, and so the way this works is because, so this, um, let's just talk about how this works for now. Um, what happens is if we capture this state, we can, we can serialize this state down and take a copy of it. We'll call that S. And then we can serialize um, the inputs, say this is inputs on frame one, 
and what that gives us is that gives us frame uh, you know s1 then we have the inputs for frame 2 which gives us another state s2 and then 3 S3 and so on. So if we were to bump up the production values here and change color, if we take a copy of change the color on the mouse and not the uh, tablet, if we were to take a copy of this and this and this and this, this is modest, modestly sized. These are each very tiny. Uh, we can then produce, um, we can produce all of, sometime I'll get that right. We can produce all of these as well and so on. Um, so that lets us um, basically, basically record the game as it gets played and you know, once we hit the end of that buffer of inputs, we just loop all the way back to the game. We reload, we reload this state here uh, into the game and start it all from the beginning again. So uh, the reason, um, so the reason that the game is set up to do this initially is that River City Ransom Underground is a networked game. We have a uh, network gameplay. So the network system works exactly the same way. So um, these inputs we get here and the player join leave events and the frames for that matter uh, all things we can receive from the network subsystem um, to up update the game on a network on a network game and there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff where we roll back so if say we're over here and frame 2 gets invalidated because someone sent different network inputs um, and we have a new 2B, we can spin the state all the way back to here and rerun, rerun through and get a new state based on the new inputs. So that this system got built out for networking initially. And one of the things that I'd always wanted to do with it was use it for basically the loop recording um, system. So um, the initial idea for it came from, I think it was uh, this fellow uh, talking about Quake 3, although I seem to recall some of the earlier Quakes did this as well. So I'm not sure if it necessarily originated here, but uh, this gentleman, Fabian Sanglard, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, wrote up a thing that talked about like um, how Quake and Doom, um, how the source code is structured, how the engine works. And you can see it's a very similar diagram here. We have uh, inputs coming in, we have uh, network UDP coming in, and we have uh, stuff coming out to the screen. And in here is just this big process. And what they did on Quake, um, and what I'm doing here and what Casey's doing, um, and, and what I'm doing is very similar to Casey and a little bit different to Quake, is if you store the state and then you store the inputs, you can reproduce um, reproduce gameplay. And what this is really, 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 really good for is debugging. So um, if I come back to the game now, so I'll start that running. Um, you know, say, you know, say, I don't know, there's no bugs here because um, we've spent a lot of time, but say, say he wasn't supposed to do that little skip over the edge and we wanted to investigate it, you know, we could we could keep playing this loop and we could look at the code and we could, we could, um, so one of the, let, let's, let's start talking about some of the features that I've added on top of the system so we can um, frame step. So I can mash this button and I can get to the exact frame where he slips off the edge and then he's just about to fall down but he actually catches that edge before he falls too far below it. So um, there's a little bit of leniency in the um, standing code just to basically to allow exactly this to happen. And so I can like 
step to exactly where that's happening. I can also fast forward. So it goes around here and get to that spot and I can um, do that. At some point, you know, I'd like to add like a scrubber so you can scrub back and forth with the mouse and um, make that work. But uh, for now, this is this is fine. So, um, so yeah, so that's one feature is we can frame step through a loop as it's playing. We can also frame step the game. So if I cancel that of that loop, um, oh, I'm moving Alex around. So I'm holding down the button and I'm frame stepping live and I can also play, I can hold down, hold down an input and I can frame step here. So there's frame stepping that um, is, is basically a layer above the updating systems. Um, so in the same way that we have, we allow the network to control when the game updates and what inputs the game um, sort of simulation takes. There's also stuff to do it uh, just with uh, developer keys. So another thing we have, we have um, this overlay. So you can see I'm jumping around. You can see uh, both characters. I can make them both jump uh, the keyboard here. And I can punch and I can kick. Um, and so on. Um, so you can see the inputs there, but if I start playing that same loop, you can see um, you can see the inputs playing back through here, and you can also see um, a count of which frames. So if I say restart that, and uh, I can step forward, and you can see, for instance, the exact frame that I jumped. So um, this is showing uh, the jump button just here. And, um, you know, that means that on the next frame, the next frame is going to start the jump. So if I step forward once and there it goes, it starts jumping. So, and then I let that play. So that's one thing we can do with it. Um, there's also, hopefully I have this loaded up correctly. Yep. So, um, uh, which key was that on? Hopefully I haven't overwritten the... No, okay, so that's a different one. Um, so yeah, so... So I can play that loop, uh, but I can also just load this loops and get back to a state. So basically it is equivalent to just the state and not any of the... Um, I'm showing that without doing that. So we can watch that in reverse. So yeah, it's equivalent to just the state and not any of the inputs, um, which is handy if you you know you have a lot of stuff you want to test and you want to just keep make sure you keep your initial conditions. So I can always you know I can jump over here and I can can smack smack Glenn a couple of times and then I can just reset and he's got all his health back and all of that. So. Uh, yeah, so we, we have um, just plain old states without any loop attached. So, yes, so one uh, one handy thing that we have is just um, drag and drop. So, like I said, this is this is a really good debugging tool, and because it's because um, you know I'm working with a team of people. Um, there's another programmer, Daniel, um, who's my boss and uh, he's the producer for the game as well and he does all the um, gameplay programming and a lot of the editor code and stuff uh, that's his um, and so say say there's a bug that he wants to show me we have drag and drop so if you can hopefully see that i have drag my mouse over um, and i drop a loop in it will start playing so it's like you know, this is this is not a bug. I'll stop. So yeah. So if you had a bug, you could send me a loop, and I could just drag it in and play it, or I could you know put it over the top of the files that run the um, you know that business. But um, yeah. So I, he's he might say, "Here's a really cool thing that I did with a tire," and send me this loop, and I'd play it, and you know, off off it would go, and. Um, Um, yeah, so you just hit that, hit the tire, and in fact, let's see if I can do sound for this. 
So it's going to restart. Uh, hope. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, there, there's, there's a loop that I've just dragged into the game uh, externally, so that really helps with debugging. And the reason we can do this is because this system is set up, um, because this system is set up for networking, like, that loop is 22 kilobytes, and um, that's 1,306 frames. Uh, and the initial state. So, whereas um, if I load up the one I was showing before that's just a state on its own, that's 1.6 kilobytes, which is a bit larger than I would like for networking, but it's okay. Um, so, yeah, so it's a really good uh, debugging aid, and it lets us share bugs that we find in gameplay um, and you know, it's like, this is broken, send a loop, you know, we'll step through it, we'll find the bug and we'll fix it. You know, it's very simple. Another thing that you can do, and this is the reason Casey calls it uh, looped live code editing, is um, let's say, here's another loop. Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, this is a wonderful thing about the loop system. So here's this great loop of um, Glenn doing the Hadoo Glenn. Uh, <laughs> I love that name. Um, and you know, it just does it over and over. So Casey does this by, um, let me have a drink. Um, Casey does this by loading the game code as a DLL and he um, basically loads a different DLL and uh, from memory he switches out the um, function calls to into that DLL so the function calls for update and and all of that stuff um, and one of the downsides of the way Casey does it because he grabs the entire um, the entire program state within uh, within sort of the context of what that DLL knows about so he actually grabs all of the memory so he can he can grab you know gigabytes and gigabytes of memory um, if that's what he's using and that has upsides because it means you can uh, uh, capture things happening outside the game and debug those, but it does mean that the files that it creates are very large. Um, so, and yeah, so, so this, this is why, like, he, the system he's using isn't a, obviously a network system, it's designed specifically for the looped live code editing. Um, so, yes. So, anyway. What were you we talking about? So live code editing. So anyway, because Casey can swap out the DLL at will, um, <clears throat> you know, he, he can just hit rebuild and the, um, the sort of little top end of the program is sitting there. It watches for when that DLL gets re replaced and loads up the new version and starts running on it. Um, that's something that I can't do easily i think i can vaguely do it it's, it's a tricky tricky thing to do because um we're running on c sharp on uh, .NET and the uh, clr and so on um but <clears throat> so that, that's the downside um on the other hand if you're running c sharp then edit and continue works well it <laughs> edit and continue works um, unlike if you're running C and C++, then edit and continue is a little bit hairy. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, and it doesn't always work reliably, whereas it works pretty reliably for C Sharp. So um, I did a video on this, um, let's pause that for a sec, called Amazingly Fast Edit and Continue. And the idea behind this is, you know, I was watching, I think I got the idea from this, uh, I was watching Notch actually doing... Um, some live coding on Twitch and he was using Java and apparently this is a thing you can do fairly easily in whichever like Eclipse or whatever he was using I made mean, this pretty simple and I was like I want to do that um, and I looked I looked into reloading 
DLLs on the fly and stuff. But then it's like, well, it's basically edit and continue, except edit and continue, you know, you have to stop, break into the debug and make your edits and change. And the trick is what you just do is you use a essentially a hotkey. So th this is a video I made a while ago of me doing just that. So anyway, and then run. So that's pretty cool. So I come over here and make it uh, pink. Uh, no, I don't like pink. But... So you know, as um, it changes the color over here pretty easily. So let's do the same thing here. So the way this works, and let me pull up um, Logitech gaming software. So this is different to when I did it in the last video. So on this button on my mouse, um, I have this macro. And I, if I edit it, you'll see that you know there's it clicks and then it does a couple of key combinations. And what these map to is in Visual Studio, they map to um, pause and then they map to navigate backwards, um, which basically does this. So let's say, I'll just ruin the size over here, but that's okay. Let's say that's running in the background. And the downside is that, you know, it doesn't, once you break into the debugger, it doesn't um, keep running, but it's close enough. So let's say, for instance, you know, this is running and it's looping around and I actually want to make a lot of projectiles. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Um, let's say projectile dot position dot y plus equals five, let's say. And then on this one we'll do minus five. So let's let's have that kick a little bit us and I just hit run and then the next time the loop comes around nothing happens. Oh pff. so this is the wonderful thing is I can just change this so get rid of whoops get rid of that and get rid of that and try again. So the loop will come around again and this time, he's <laughs> so I didn't test this before. So he's shooting three at once and apparently they collide with each other. So maybe I should have tested that. I imagine that was pretty cool in game if you got two Glens and they both, you know, shoot a thing at each other and they impact in the middle of the screen. So let's try something else. This is this is why we're doing live production. Is you know anything can happen. So there's Hadouken EX. So there's the the super version. And so let's just let's just say that we're always going to do the fancy one. So we'll comment that out, and we'll comment. You know what? Let's. So I have this an enormous amount of respect for you know Casey coding on stream because it's actually not simple. So let's just change the type to that on the fly. So it's going to spawn the fancy one that it shouldn't be spawning um, for the mini, mini Hadouken. And it's done that just by live editing. So I can then go in there and I can live edit down to regular and then it's going to, next time the loop comes around, it'll spawn the regular one. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I, I can do what I was doing before, which is projectile dot position dot y plus equals 10. And then this is going to, uh, produce that like way off, you can do it even plus 50. So this is gonna, you know, when it spawns a projectile, it'll end up up there, so, and miss. And, you know, you can just keep doing this loop. And then if I go in and I try and undo all these um, changes and hopefully remember not to check anything broken back into the repository, there we go. So yeah, so that's, that's how um, I achieve live editing is just basically with edit and continue and just a sneaky little um, little um, hotkey that sort of engages that very quickly. Uh, and it's, it's near enough, it's close. It gets 95% of the benefit of um, switching out DLLs. And it's obviously very easy to uh, implement. So that's the live editing thing. So another thing we can do, uh, let's bring back the, um, frame counter. Let's see if I can fix up. Now, last time I did this, I made it crash. I think there was a problem with OBS. So I'm, in fact, I will fix the, fix the game resolution later. For the time being, we'll just run like this. So, um, <clears throat> so there's another thing that we can do. And that is say, I really want to debug 
or fiddle with that animation there, the animation where Alex gets actually smacked in the face. So I can fast forward to there. What I can do, we'll step forward to it when he's about to get hit. Because, you know, if you're doing like um, a fiddly bit of debugging with something that takes a little while to set up, you might record the whole setup and then you just want you just want the bit where he's hitting getting hit with the fireball so i'll start recording another loop and i can just frame step uh, frame step through that uh, that was fast forward but still the same effect uh, yeah there's frame step um, so i've just recorded that and then i can load up just that bit of the loop and then you know, say that's say that's not tight enough because I hit fast forward. I can load that one up and pause it. I can frame it. Yeah. So that's exactly where I want it to be. I can start recording on another loop slot. I can record on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten frames, and then I just have this ten frame loop of him getting smacked in the face, which is exactly what I wanted. So uh, that's that's another thing we can do. We have loop to loop recording. Um, I think that is all of the features that I had to show about the loop recorder. So yeah, so we have drag and drop, we have um, we have loop to loop recording, we have fast forward and frame step. Um, it's working on the network uh, serializer and input system, so uh, it produces very tiny snapshots, and I can fiddle around with edit and continue in a sort of clever way to get pretty much live code editing. Um, which, you know, so this is made like there's five, there's, I want to say there's over 500 moves in the game. Pretty sure that's right. And, you know, any one of those could have a bug and, you know, Daniel could find it. Uh, Bannon, our artist could find it. Um, Steve, our technical artist. And um, I'm going to go with technical artist. He does, he does a lot of stuff for us. Um, you know, they might find a bug and it's very simple for them to just record it like this and send the loop and um, either myself or Daniel can be like, all right, we'll, we'll fix it based on that loop. So yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, now I didn't, I think I forgot to do this last time. So uh, pause. So if you want to keep following along, go to my YouTube channel, uh, which is Andrew Russell Studios or my Twitter account, which is at and underscore Andrew Russell or my website, which is andrewrussell.net. And so you will find these episodes will come up there. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.